One of the most overlooked things about rally racing, when you're a driver and co-driver in your car, is you forget to pack a flashlight. So hooking up some awesome service lights is a must for your race car. What's up guys? So we just got back from a bike ride. The dog is amped up. Throwing roost. And yeah, rotary truck, bike ride. It was epic. I appreciate y'all watching the little intro there. Sometimes I get a wild hair to do some fancy editing. Or not really fancy, but film other things. So I figured I'd give you a quick sinkhole update before we hop to the race car. So as you can see, it is substantially grown in magnitude, okay? The underground portion of the sinkhole is approximately the same size. It did this side right here, the close side to us caved in um, and fell down. So, like right here, I'm fine to stand here, you can kind of see down in there. It goes probably another eight or 10 feet down that way. And the reason I'm telling you this is because it's right underneath this tree. Okay, now if you know anything about anything with leverage and trees and all sorts of stuff, generally if you have a tree and it's weighted towards one direction like this tree is, you can see if you use the post of my gazebo as straight, the tree is obviously maybe 6 to 8, 15 degrees kicked this way. Well, this way are assets that I don't want to damage. That tree, if it fell, let's see some quick icrometering. Y'all have the wide angle. I don't. We'll say here to there to there. We'll probably land, maybe touch the back of the rotary truck. I don't know. Comment below where you think it would land, but I think it'd probably hit that. I'd bet that tree's 90 foot. Well, maybe not. Maybe 70. Anyways, these cars are in the danger zone now. So, what I gotta do, because this week's gonna be a hectic week for me, I'm um, traveling and all sorts of stuff. So I got to get these cars moved out of the way because it's one thing for me to be here when it's storming so I can kind of see how the tree's reacting. Um, and if it looks like it's going to fall, then I'll move stuff. But with me being gone, not having a lot of time this week to move these cars, I'm going to do it today. So neither of these three cars run besides the RX-8. And I'm going to move my mower and then I'm just going to line these three cars up right here. Um, this spot over here is no risk at all of any tree hitting them, um, you know. This little tree right here, this hackberry tree is all good. Oh man, we lost a tree up there. Holy cow! You guys seeing that? Let's go investigate. <laughs> no way! I could have swore it looked brighter back here whenever I drove up here from riding my bike, but I didn't know why. I figured it's just so I could cut these trees down. Holy sheesh, dudes. Holy sheesh. Y'all probably can't see anything because we're down in the weeds, but look at that big old tree. Here, let's go up the hill. All right, my guys, so we're up on the hill way above my house. If you see my house way down there, this big old tree fell down. See the branches? So that's what I don't want to happen with cars underneath it. Welcome to living in the forest guys we're back down below the house i appreciate y'all tagging along for this tree venture here in the beginning of this video i promise i'm gonna go i filmed some stuff last night plus today got more stuff going on the race car we accomplished a lot and are going to accomplish a lot in this video so for now i'm gonna quickly time lapse dragging all these cars out of the way and we'll get right into working on the car and uh yeah well i was just up there though let me tell you i was up there in the woods up behind the house way up on that hill and my house is protected by this this ridge. I'm like halfway up the ridge. So, you know, it goes another 100 feet in elevation up on 
three sides, basically all trees and then down. But anyways, the ridge protects a lot of the wind off the trees by my house and off my house, but the top of the ridge is rolling. And I was in there and I heard some crackling and popping and moving and there's a couple trees that are widow makered up in there, which is normal for any forest. You're going to see trees that are laying on other trees that fell and didn't fall and you just, nature takes care of it for you. But you just don't want to be around because that's why they're called widow makers. And one made a pretty good noise and I made like a shepherd and got the flock out of there. So I'm going to unload the bike, move the cars, start building brackets for the, uh, the, uh, uh, service lights and finish up the dash wiring on this car. We should be ready for some awesomeness. I got to add relays and everything for the front lights and all that stuff will get done here today too. So peace. We'll see you in a second. My dudes, look at the light. So stoked with how this came out. So we got one light mounted right here. You'll notice all the wire and the Velcro, just like I drew it up. And then the other light, the mobile service light mounted back here. Same thing, all the wire and the Velcro. The whole purpose of this is so you can un-Velcro this because the last thing you're thinking about, like I said in the other video, is carrying a flashlight with you when you're driving your rally car. So, these are your mobile flashlights mounted to your car, a switch in the dash, the batteries never die, you're good to go. So anyways, pop the Velcro off, pull this baby out, just gotta un unwind the wire, and you've got a nice handheld little mobile flashlight. You know, maybe you smashed your gas tank in. There's more to this. A couple extra feet here. Pull that out. All right, maybe you smashed your gas tank in. Maybe you need to change a tire, right? A driver can stand there while the co-driver changes a tire. Um, same thing here. Just kidding. Us drivers, we change our own tires, right? So, pretty stoked, you know? This little deal, sorry if I wash the camera out. Basically right there, you can see the little bracket. You wrap up all the wire all the way around the outside, just like this. Go all the way around until the wire is all wrapped up. Once you get it wrapped up, slide this baby back on those posts. That holds the wire down. Take your Velcro pieces. Bam. Affixed. I would bet that that light is 100% rally proof and it's not going to fall off. It's uh, mounted with a sheet metal screw to the body. So you know those never come off. Rally guys, sheet metal screws the bomb. And then the engine bay light has a couple, maybe two feet more than what that light does back there. So the engine bay light can reach all the way over here to change this tire if you need the light. You can also, of course, it can reach right there. Anywhere around the engine bay. Ideally, it's long enough too if you have to get up, up under the car. Maybe you jammed a stick up under there or something and you've got the car jacked up. You can throw the light under the car, pull it out. The other thing that's epic about these, and uh, I'm going to button up all the wiring tomorrow, most likely, and get the relays and stuff ran for the front. Um, the best thing about these is that they're cheap. So, 30 bucks gets you a new set of four, right? You've already got all the infrastructure in place for wiring and mounts. If you are in a hurry and you forget to throw your rock light back up, this is on a separate fuse, separate switch. You can cut it off. If it blows the fuse, it blows the fuse. It's not going to kill the whole car. That way, if you are in a hurry, you can just just take off. Just like all those people that drive away from gas stations with the gas pump handle still in their car. You can leave one of these on the side of the road and not be too sad about it. Pretty easy to fix. The spool of wire is mounted to the mount. So 
you'll never rip any more wire off than what you have that's mobile, right? That was my intent. So I'm stoked with how it came out. As you saw, it looks epic at night with this whole thing lit up, especially having some light in the engine bay as well. And uh, yeah, I'm stoked. So tomorrow, the next bit in the video, which I'll show you once I get it all cleaned up, um, I've got the wiring stuff. I need to just finish hooking up all of the switches, pull all the leads for the switches so I can mount that panel and just have the leads for the switches hanging out down here, meaning that I have enough wire that I don't have to take the center console back out because it kind of sucks to take that out. Um, get the center console perma mounted in there for the most part, get the leads ran, pull the leads through here. I've already got the wiring ran or semi ran, as you can see, I'm taped to the battery for now, but semi ran long enough where I need to go to run it all out the back. I don't think I really have any extra stuff I need to run to the back. So that one extra wire is just going to get zip tied to the main body harness that goes to the back. Um, and yeah, that's about it. There really isn't too much else to, to hooking up the service lights. And then I'm going to run just some simple, you know, four position relays and then have a main feed and a signal. Just some of these guys. There'll be two of these up at the front of the car because I'm going to, I want to have four lights. I like the four lights look, not the three, not the two. I want four KC lights across the front of this unit. And to power four of those, those things are notoriously called alternator killers. Um, even the hella ones, just because they're huge, they draw a lot of amps, and they ruin stuff. So anyways, I'm going to run a big feed wire up there to feed both of those relays. Those two relays will split two lights each. And then the switch, all the switch has to do is send a signal to it. And that way we don't burn the switch up. Like I said, all the infrastructure is in place. The relays will be clearly marked. If one quits, you can fix it. Super easy. So, and as a matter of fact, this car, the whole entire goal of this car, unlike my yellow one, is that this car retains most, if not all, of the factory electrical function, meaning that the factory fuel pump relay, the factory injector relays, the factory, like, headlight relays and factory fuse boxes are all, boxes, are all in, uh, in fun, or in use, right? Which means that when you have issues, you can actually go look at a service manual to try to figure it out on my yellow car if something didn't work if i hadn't basically like rebuilt the car i wouldn't have known where to start looking there was wires all over the place in that car there was accessory fuse blocks mounted under the dash under the glove box under everywhere there was all sorts of stuff going on with that one so fortunately i just kind of hacked and repaired everything that was there not really hacked it was actually pretty dang nice after I stripped all the junk out, but got everything back to where it was functional. This one, trying to keep it stock. And y'all are like, oh, stock, it's a race car. No. This car is basically a GSLC. All it has is stock fuel injection, stock dash harness, stock rear harness. I mean, everything's pretty much stock. Stock tank, stock location fuel pump. I mean, it has an exhaust, and I'm running an airbox because, well, rally sucks up dirt. So, And we're gonna even going to run a clutch fan. Let me tell you. Little aside before we jump to tomorrow, whenever I'm finishing and closing this video up, because it's late right now. I drifted a whole day in 100, de 100 degree heat with my silver Bridgeport, full Bridgeport 1980 RX7. 100 degree heat, never saw over 210 for my water temps, never saw over 220 for my oil temps, and the thing has a stock clutch fan and it would cool down in grid. So I could do five laps, and I as a driver would get too hot and have to quit. And then the car was like, I'll keep going. Just let me sit here, wrap away, cool right off. So clutch fan for the win. If you can run one, run one. They are the bomb. And on these low horsepower cars, you might be like, oh, well, the 10 extra horsepower. All right, you can throw a gravel piece, an extra three feet. But when your car is overheated because you ripped the electric fan wiring off on a stick and I'm still cruising past you with my belt drive clutch fan, ask me how I know about awesome two extra feet of gravel throwing or whatever. I'm, I don't know. You get the picture. Clutch fan, more reliable, simpler, easier. Run it. Keep it stock. All right. Tomorrow, tidy up the wiring. Tomorrow, we'll be hitting switches to turn these on. So get soaked for that. Alrighty, folks. So more work has been completed, and I wanted to show you my uh, masterpiece here. So we have the center console right back out of the car. 
I had to modify the uh, shifter boot holder so the original design from LRB only has these three bolts here to hold the separate plate that pinches the shifter boot. Well, the uh, long center sections didn't have enough support. So fortunately, LRB supplied some extra screws for up here that I'm not using there in the center. And I decided to drill through the shifter boot and put another bolt, as you can see right there, the extra one on that. So now you're looking at all that, you might've got a sneak preview of the wiring job. So here's what we've got on the back of this rig, if I can get this thing to stand up. So three switches, two of them, one of them being my front lights, which only operates a relay here. The other one being the uh, interior lights, the service lights, which are super low current LEDs here, share the same feed, which runs through this braided um, piece here, this twisted loom piece here. Share a feed from my fuse block, they'll be on the same fuse. The main power for the front lights will be on a different fuse, but the signal to turn them on will be on the same as the service lights. The ground for these switches, which you might be like, why? It's a switch. Why do you have to ground it? Well, they have lights on. So when the little blue light turns on, which this one obviously isn't hooked up anything, the darker colored little tab there is a ground wire. And what that ground does is it borrows power from the accessory and turns the light and the switch on. So the ground, they're all shared runs through this loomed piece as well. And then the, uh, what was the other one? This other blue with white stripe wire here runs through that loomed piece. And that loomed piece plus this big red wire all go to the main fuse block that I have in the glove box. That's like my accessory fuse block, right? I didn't want to modify any of the stock harness. So this big wire here, the top of the switch is my power out. The bottom of the switch is battery to it. So this one will get power as soon as you turn the big switch on. This main power goes to the fuse block, turns it on. From the fuse block, it goes through the fuses, comes back up into here, and powers the top of these three switches. The yellow and the green are the leads for my relay for the front, and the green is an extra one that I'm going to run. I don't know exactly what I'm going to run it on. I wanted to put a horn in here, but I think I'm going to mount the horn behind the shifter because it's way easier as a driver or passenger to just be able to button mash back behind the shifter to hit your horn. That's where I put it in my yellow car. It was awesome. So that'll probably be a separate deal for the air horns. But anyways, that's that. I am deleting the little lights that go up in the corners of these. There's only two things. One controls the fan, one controls the heat. If you can't figure it out without a light in it in the dark, well then remember. So that's the simple switch panel right here. Looks super nice. I will say the LRB stuff, um, it's really like it's a really nice piece saves you a ton of time to make it but um, like I said in an earlier video it can be kind of a pain to install you've got to put these little spacer things around the shifter and putting that shifter boot in is a real pain in the butt and then today and yesterday I spent basically cleaning up all the wiring um, the rest of the wiring up under the dash just making sure that it is zip tied and modified and put where it needs to be so I'm gonna go ahead and install this and we'll turn these lights on and off and I'll show you my awesome creation for my uh, service lights. All right, my dudes, look at this unit. So I got a bunch of this stuff cleaned up. We are fixing to send power to this rig right now. So um, fuse blocks all wired in. These are my two extra leads, one for the front lights, one for the um, whatever else I want to do. I still need to extend the wire for my front um, LED service light and put these little nuts on. This thing is a real real pain in the butt to get this in here to get it to like actually fit nice and I don't like that it has a little gap up here which you can't really tell but there's nothing I can do about it so anyways and fitting these two screws is kind of a pain but regardless let's put some power to this rig see if it burns down oh well my switches are hooked up backwards 
that's wonderful so this one should be my service lights but bam I guess um, it's hooked up so when it's down the light comes on and when it's up the light goes off I guess it's not necessarily a problem since the light does come on when it does go on anyways okay we got lights look at that so service lights chilling up in there I've got to zip tie this wire up but no big deal let's see do they go off with the power yes I do so we, do we have light over here no nope, because we don't have any fuse pops we haven't blown our fuse yet either all right so here is let me get out of this car it's an engine it's a light in your engine bay I mean you can't can't stress it enough guys when you're gonna race rally if you're gonna race rally doing the whole deal having the ability to work on and service your car is the most important thing out there because rally is not about for some teams the driver and co-driver all they have to do is focus on going fast they have people in the pits that can fix the car for them right or they can limp it home whatever but for people like me I can't afford to have a whole crew of guys rallying a car for me yet so I gotta make my stuff easy for me to work on and that's the same reason why you know I was thinking about this a little bit ago I'm like people are gonna be like why the heck are you running this really cheesy little off-road fuse block to run all your stuff and I'm over here like well because it's simple it doesn't require some $400 PMU computer controlled switch panel thingy McJanger like all the new hot guys are running these days and I can fix that with parts from a parts store right you can't go to O'Reilly's and get a CPU something or other whatever those things even use for your like ECU master EMU black whatever the heck plug and play I'm saying all sorts of ECU terms the thingy that you program so that when you hit a button on it it turns something on and you only have to run one power wire to it. So that thing, right? You can't service that. Not that it would ever need service, but in a rally car, you never know. Your car might catch on fire. You might run it into the weeds and go up and you might want to still compete and finish your rally, you know? So make it finishable or serviceable. So with that, that's going to be the end of today's video. Let's show you this thing with the lights off. It looks sick. I was already, I rigged it up so the lights came on last night. Bam. Guys, we got lights, yo. It just looks super nice in here with with everything chilling. The whole car lit up. How about that? All right. So with that guys, I'm going to leave, leave you guys, or with that, that's going to be the end of today's video. I appreciate you guys tagging along. I apologize that there's not a ton of crazy, awesome action, um, and filming me wiring is kind of boring. So got all the wiring sorted, the panels mounted, perma mounted, hopefully, and uh, it should be good to go. I'm stoked to the next steps for the race car. We'll go over it real quick before I just cut this off. I've got to go over the rear harness, which is this. So this is the rear harness. It goes from right behind the seat all the way around the back to service all the taillights. So I've got to finish up that harness, rewrap it, get it all ready to lay in here. Once that's in here, I'll attach all the wiring that comes to this rear service light back here, which you can see. The rear service light, um, which also has a lead on it so you can go to each side. Um, that light, that harness needs to go in then the wiring will be pretty much done. Then I can work on putting the bottom half of the dash on, which will basically finish out the interior. Um, I'm waiting, or I am waiting. I haven't ordered seats yet. Seats are expensive, and when it comes to having $1,000 worth of red Sparco seats, if not more, sitting in my car to get dirty, as you can see, my hands get dirty, and I'm doing wiring, like not even playing with dirt. And uh, I just really didn't want to get them all nasty, so I haven't ordered them, but... That's really loud to hear late at night. So I got to put the rest of this dash in. Do you remember we painted all those panels all nice? And like I said, this car will retain every bit of stock function. So the the lights in the dash have the stock dimmer. Your cigarette lighter in the dash will work. Your 
Uh, mirror, power mirrors won't work because I don't have any wiring in the door, but uh, what else is over there? Oh, the fuel door, the electric popper will work. The electric pump, pop, pump, trunk popper will work. All that stuff. So, anyways, that's the race car. I am hope I hope that you enjoyed learning about installing the most epic service lights in your race car. And, uh, yeah, if you're interested in following along, with the rally car stuff, if you don't already, hit the subscribe button. We'll see you guys in the very next video. Keep it red. Peace. You know, I'm not really stoked about that. We'll see you guys in the next one. Keep it rad. There you go. Probably not even going to edit that out. Because it's late. Yo, dog. Here she comes. What are you doing?